Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson. Also, I am a technical consultant for Altium. And today we are going to be looking at how to use your selection filter settings and the query engine in Altium Designer to very quickly adjust your routing settings particularly when you're dealing with impedance control traces. Now, sometimes when you're dealing with an impedance controlled board, maybe you have to send that board out to different manufacturers. What can happen sometimes is the manufacturer may come back with a stack up recommendation that does not match what you have in your design files. The result can be a very large deviation in the impedance, particularly if you have a lot of differential pairs or a lot of RF stuff on the board. One other thing that can happen is maybe somebody just designed it to the wrong impedance and you need to adjust it. Well, there are some tools in Altium Designer that help you do all of this really quickly. I'm going to show you how to use them to make these changes and get your board perfect for manufacturing. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm inside of this project in Altium Designer. This is essentially just an interface board. And what I have here are five differential pairs, all part of a MIPI channel. And I have some other differential pairs that are part of a, another MIPI channel here on an inner layer. And so you can see here that they are essentially length matched to each other. And there's also small bumps here where they come off of the connector in order to also match the individual trace lengths within the pair. Now, let's just suppose for a moment that this particular design comes to you from a contractor or you submit it for review somewhere and the manufacturer comes back and says, we can't do this stack up, but we can do this alternative stack up. And that forces you to change the layer stack in your design. Now, this is not the most common situation, but it is something that can happen. And so in this case, what ends up happening is if you have to then change your layer settings, the result is that it can change the impedance target that you now have programmed into Altium Designer as your design rule. As a result, if that impedance target changes, all of a sudden, all of these traces are now going to violate your impedance design rules. So what do you do? Well, if it was just one differential pair, then you would probably just bite the bullet and reroute it. But if you're dealing with a more complex board where you have multiple differential pairs all running in parallel, which is actually very common in high-speed boards and particularly in embedded systems, then you would have a lot of rerouting that you would have to do. So what do you do about that? What you can do is you can change your differential pair rule target or your impedance target, and then you can actually bulk edit all of the differential pairs that are part of that interface so that they now match your impedance target, and then they're gonna have the correct impedance again. So let me show you what I mean. So let's just suppose for a moment that you know, we submit this particular design for manufacturing and they come back and they tell us, you know, this outer layer of prepreg is not something that they stock and they have to give you something as an alternative. For sake of argument, maybe it's, you know, six mils and let's say 4.2 DK. So if we look at this, we now see that just that very small change in the thickness, you know, from 4.7 mils to six mils and then a DK change from I believe 4.5 to 4.2, that now causes our impedance on this top layer to then be 111 ohms with these trace settings here that we already have in the board. So this trace width and this trace spacing for this differential pair now would have an impedance of 111 ohms. Well, if our target here, as you can see on the right side of the screen is 100 ohms, we're now outside of our tolerance. And so we would want to adjust those trace widths and spacing in order to hit that target again. We've already hit the target once with 5.315 mils. What we would want to do in this case is we would actually want to then increase the width of those traces and then change the spacing to compensate for that so that we can then hit our impedance target. So if you just go in here to the layout, and let's say you select these two traces. And let's say I increase these by one mil. You'll notice here that Altium Designer increases them along the center line of the traces. And so as a result, it decreases the spacing. So I've increased the width here by one mil. That then decreases the spacing here by a corresponding one mil. So you can use that fact to then dial in exactly what width 
and spacing you're going to want to hit in your design in order to get back to this 100 mil target. So here when I increase this by one mil for the width and then I decrease the gap by one mil as a result, I then get back to a 101.73 impedance. So that's really close. That's within 2% of where we wanna be at 100 ohms differential impedance. So we're gonna go ahead and go with it. Now, if I were to just start selecting traces, in some cases, that's fine, you'll be able to do it, but sometimes those traces can span on multiple layers. Here, you'll notice that you have length tuning sections. And so if I select this length tuning section, you can already see here that there is no width setting. So how do I change the width of these traces in the length tuning section? Because if I just change the width here on this trace, and let's say I make this 6.315 mils, you'll notice that it actually doesn't change the width at all of this length matching section. So in order to select all of these objects and do some bulk editing, we need to do a couple of things. First, we wanna convert all of those length tuning sections to primitives. Then once they're converted to primitives, we can use the selection filter tools and the selection filter tools will allow us to then just select those traces and arcs and then we can change their width. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So the first thing we wanna do is go up to the tools menu, go down to convert, and then explode length tuning to free primitives. And all I need to do is just click on these length tuning sections, and then they will get converted to arcs and to traces. So if I then go over here and just select, let's say this section, You'll see that with my selection filter turned on, it's just set to select tracks or other. And you can see here as I expand over this section, only the tracks get selected. So then here I can just also select the arcs. So now you can see I'm set up on the top layer with these five differential pairs to start using the selection filter to then modify the width and then get back to my impedance target. Now you'll notice here that there's a lot of other stuff that is on this board and I can't just take you know, the tracks and arcs selection filter and then do a control A and then just try and select those tracks and just modify them. The reason is that it's gonna select everything else, obviously, I've got other tracks on this layer. And it's kind of difficult to go through and drag and select like this because you will notice here, you end up selecting something else that you didn't really intend to select in the process. For example, if I'm up here in this region and I go to select you know, some of these traces, it's possible that I select something else that is not part of this differential protocol that we don't want to change the length of, or the width of, I should say. So then what we can do is go over to the PCB panel. And inside the PCB panel, we'll be able to select specific objects, and we can then use the selection filter to narrow down to specific objects within these nets. So here, I've already defined a differential pair class. And to define your differential pair class, just go down to design and classes, and you'll be able to create net classes. You can create differential pair classes, and you can see right here, I have my differential pair class set up right there. Now here, if I just select differential 100 ohm, you'll notice here that it selects not just the stuff on this outer layer, but also the stuff on this inner layer. Now you'll notice here that I only have protocol number one set up here on this top layer. So what I can do is I can just look at the individual differential pairs because I've already defined all of these as differential pairs. I can just select these. And then what I could do is I could go over here to the selection filter and just select specific objects. In this case, we just want the tracks and arcs. So let me show you how to do that again. We just select these nets in the PCB panel. We then have our selection filter turned on. We only want to modify the tracks and arcs. We don't want to modify any pads or vias or anything else that's on this set of nets. With those selected, I can then just enter in my new width and it's gonna change everything. So that's a really easy way to do this. It changes everything. One of the downsides of this is that these differential pair length tuning sections are locked in place now. You may need to do a little bit of adjustment if you have really tight length tuning tolerances, but in general, once you make that change in the stack up, the change in the propagation delay is gonna be really small. So if you've already length matched everything with the old impedance spec or with the old trace geometry, it's definitely gonna remain within the length tuning tolerance in the new geometry unless your lines are extremely long. So in this case, I'm comfortable just leaving it as it is, 
We did this on the top layer, really quick selection, and really quickly brought all of our differential pair geometries back into spec so that we hit our target impedance. Next, you could do the exact same thing on an inner layer just by going back into the layer stack manager. Go to that inner layer where you have your differential impedance spec defined. Go ahead and make the adjustments if any of these layers change. Then go back here to the PCB panel and select either your net class or the individual differential pairs and then make the modification and then you're done. So we've done all of that in a matter of minutes. We didn't have to reroute anything. All we had to do is just do some selection filtering and then change one of the settings in the properties panel and that's it, we're good to go. Now you're probably wondering, what do we do about these differential pairs? Because if you remember, these differential pairs also span on to the next layer and their width and spacing requirement is gonna be different from the width and spacing requirement on the top layer. So we already modified these differential pairs, but we also need to modify these differential pairs because they're part of the same interface and they need to all have the same impedance. If we were to just use the PCB panel, here on the PCB panel, if I just select diff 100 ohm, or if I just select, let's say, these uh, nets number two, you'll see here that it selects everything across all layers. Even if I have the selection filter enabled, you'll see here that it still selects across all layers. And in addition, we also have this length tuning issue here where I have to select this particular length tuning segment and convert it into free primitives. So to make sure that we just select stuff on one layer, you can use the PCB filter panel. And what this requires you do is you build a filter query. Now, you don't have to have this memorized. What you can actually do is just use the builder dialog. So this query builder allows you to select specific objects based on these logical conditions. So just as an example, let's say we want to select everything in our 100 ohm differential net pair class and we want it to only exist on, let's say, layer 3. So here, layer three, you see it's SIG1. I just put SIG1, then I hit OK, hit Enter, and then you'll see here that it just blanks out everything except for this stuff. So what I could do is I could essentially just select other, and you'll see here it only selects the stuff on this layer that falls in the other category. In this case, it is these length tuning segments. And I can go here, convert, explode length tuning to free primitives. Sometimes you have to do it double. That's okay, just keep doing it until it goes through. And then these will all get converted to tracks and arcs. Then just hit Shift C to clear out the filter. So what I can do here, since this is all on SIG1, let's say I wanted to change the width of all of these tracks and vias. Again, just set this particular set of filters in the selection filter, drag and select, and then I go over here to the width portion and then I would edit this. I could do the same thing on the top layer. So here on the top layer, remember I also wanted to change the width of these tracks as well. And all I would need to do is just change this layer name to top layer, you can just type it in. Then once you hit enter, you'll see here, it just selects that stuff on this layer. So now I can go through and select it all. And here under width, just put in my new width, hit enter. You see it adjusts the width of these guys. These were already adjusted and that's it, we're done. That's pretty much the easiest way to go through and change all of these widths so that you match your new impedance target without doing any rerouting. And you can do that across multiple layers with the PCB filter panel. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in and checking out this tutorial on how to use the selection filter for correcting your differential pair routing. We hope this doesn't happen to you, but if it does ever happen to you, All Team Designer gives you some great tools that help you really quickly bring your board back into spec and make sure that you have signal integrity on your differential pairs. All right, thanks again, everybody. Make sure to hit subscribe, hit that like button, leave those comments and questions in the comments section. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator on this stuff, folks.